Alright, we're going to get started. Uh, so next up we have some actual hands-on uh, presentation going on. Uh, this will be basically how to get your data into Bigs. So uh, Patrick and uh, Dimutu are going to run this. Um, and just another shout out to, to Patrick. Actually, he's he, he just got uh, chosen to be the bids. Um, oh, sorry, what's the title? Uh, student developer. <laughs> yeah, so he's the bids uh, student developer for uh, this summer. Uh, it's a bid, uh, it's a Google Summer code project. So he's going to be the official bids ambassador globally. So good job. <laughs> So if you guys have a laptop, um, yeah, like just like I'm saying or whatever, this should be very like there's no installing or anything. We're just gonna be doing it all manually. There's no like programming or anything. So every computer should work. Um, like uh, just get it open. And actually, can we go to the uh, the Slack channel first? Uh, the Brain Hack. Is everyone on Slack? On yeah. the Slack channel. Yeah. Set up for Brain Hack. So we're joining a. Uh, do you, you want to show them the, uh, how to get on the Slack? Yeah. Hi, Trigger Blue. Press the Brain Hack logo for like the. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it'll show like the. Guys, do we have the link that you need? The so you go to brainhack.slack.com. Yeah. So if everyone goes to brainhack.slack.com. There's a link. So actually, you can go there from the uh, the from, Heroku app, right? Yeah, it's from from Brain Hack Western website, right? So yeah. Brain Hack Western. Yeah, I think you can go to the Brain Hack Western website. And then the second top. Yeah, just their landing page. at any point to just raise your hand like completely informally like just dark shite it shut it down. Once you're there, you should see, uh, you should be able to see what we're posting in the message channel. Yeah. So are people signing? Has anyone not been able to access this kind of message thread yet? Or are we okay for that for the most part? It's okay if it's, we're going slow, like I just don't want to leave people behind who are trying to follow along, yeah. so. If anyone wants a bit more time to catch up, you don't have to follow along, you, you can just, just. Yeah, you can also just watch. Yeah, just watch. Yeah. Anyone need more time? So um, if we switch over to, uh, so uh, this is kind of, we'll have half slides and half uh, like the interactive side here. So if you want to switch to the, uh, to the slides. Um, okay, so to the tutorial. 
Uh, this is where you can find the example data set that you'll be working with. Um, Sorry, Patrick, what was the channel again? Uh, BHG this one. 18 dash Western. Yeah, it'll be better if you are actually on the Slack because there's like some links and stuff, which we try to make it tiny URLs, but still, it saves you some time. Yeah, okay. So, if we download this data set, um, you'll be able to get some sort of a zip file that looks like this from a Google Docs, essentially. And then uh, the first step is, of course, to just uh, unzip it. Just uh, go to the folder. Uh, you'll see roughly like we'll just be uh, doing uh, an example of three images today. Like of course your data set could consist of many more than this, uh, but effectively you're starting with uh, one subject that has a resting state uh, fMRI, um, a T1 weighted, and a T2 uh, in-plane nifty. So these are your starting files, and then um, can we go to the slide section? So the first step is to uh, create the subject folder. So um, under bids, all subject folders follow the convention of uh, sub dash zero uh, number, or sub dash number basically. So if you want to create a folder that has her under here. Uh, does it have to be only numbers? Uh, no, actually it can have letters but it is whatever, um, as long as you're consistent with what your folder names are uh, versus what you specify in your participant's file, which we'll create later on. So just letters and numbers, no special characters. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So it's sub okay. Sub, sub dash uh, zero one. Oh, underscore. Uh, no, dash. So are we on the same? Um, okay, so wait, guys, do we have the data and stuff yet? Or, like, I promise you'll get more out of it if you just follow along, but, um, yeah. So there was the no URL problems? Uh, the URL? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Actually, while we're doing this, can I just, like, don't be immersed, can I get a show of hands to see who's following along so I know where to look in the room to see if people are following behind the thing? Just how many people are actually doing the files and stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Pardon? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, sorry, which step are you on? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, so if you just follow the... Yeah, so uh, key, yeah the key thing is really just to download the data there. Yeah, just yeah. type this URL. So you don't need to go to Slack, you just need yeah. to yeah. enter that URL. Yeah. yeah.
are we able to see three files? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so uh, next, we need to yeah create the subject folder just like this, um, and you can kind of uh, we'll be creating more subfolders later. But for now, you can just drag all of your files uh, in there. So now, what you need to do is create a participants file. So in order to do that, uh, you're going to go up to the uh, go up one directory to sub zero one. Uh, so you should see this, and then you're going to just like creating any uh, like text file or whatever. Just right click anywhere, open Notepad, and create a uh, new uh, text document, and you can name it. Um, participants dot TSV. So this is just the file that's going to, uh, if you were at the um, thing earlier, if you were at our um, or a more lecture part earlier, this is where you're going to specify subject 01 uh, mail 25 or something like that. Uh, so what we can do is if you go to the next uh, slide, uh, here, um, you're actually going to be able to find some uh, templates of uh, some files, JSON and temp, uh, TSV. So if you follow this link here, this will actually bring you to um, a, a repository where we have templates of these files. What's up? If you're on Windows, you need to click on View and Show Files. Oh, okay, okay, that's okay. Is it not the TSV file here though? Yeah, you have to go up to the first. On someone else's computer, they may play in general. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, if that's, yeah, exactly. It should actually be a TSV file, not just called a TSV. So that's the. The, the JSON file, but if we go up to template, actually, we'll go back. Oh, and this GitHub stuff. This one? Yeah. Also, if you get lost, we kind of have like an answer key data set at the end, uh, and we'll be posting the slides. So, uh, actually, if you want to click back to uh, tab. To the sub zero one level, I think. This one? Yeah. Or the one before that templates. Uh, participants at TSP. Uh, uh, so effectively, um, you can also download uh, this file, but. So are we on the same page? It's okay if we're not. Have we been able to create a participants at TSV file and create the template um, over at all? Or it's okay, like just please just raise your hand and ask for clarification about anything. Sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, so uh, so what TSV stands for is um, tab separated. What's a V in order? F values. values values right. Um, and basically, this can just uh, it's kind of like creating like a table except um, with tabs in between your columns, and uh, yeah, it can easily be parsed and it's. Pretty sure it's more robust than comma separated uh, values for some applications. So you can use commas in your in your values, I guess. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it easily readable by um, 
Excel? Uh, yeah, exactly. You can. Uh, Do you have Excel? Yeah, you can open it with. Uh, you just open it on Excel. I think you can right click. Yeah. You can just. Uh, oh, yeah. So on Excel, I think you just yeah, switch that to everything. If you switch your participants file to everything, uh, I think you're below one directory. Excel, you should see something like this uh, on just a regular text editor. You should see something like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, if you feel more comfortable working with this, you can also create it in Excel and export it to a TSV. But we'll just. Uh, so, do we have participant TSV files uh, moving forward? Yeah, that's a tab. Okay, and after sex, that's the in parent, then next line. Exactly. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is a new line. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, can we move to the next tab? Uh, And then, so the next file we need to create is the data set description. So uh, you're going to create a file called um, data set underscore description dot json. And we also have a template for that uh, available online. So if you follow the, uh, the link, which we'll put up in just a second, right after we show it, uh, you should come up to something that looks like this. Or sorry, not this. Uh, yeah, if you go back to... from the, the tiny URL, are people able to get to this screen where they can see the template uh, data set description file? Yeah or, yeah, or we can just post the link on Slack too. So basically, you can just copy. I mean, these. So in a real example, um, you would want to fill in all of these uh, fields with like who are the authors and who are the people you wish to acknowledge your sources of funding and your references. Um, but for now, all we need is the file to be there uh, that looks like this, basically just a skeleton of the file. Um, so uh, once we have that in our directory.
So are people okay for this step so far, following along? We got to the JSON file. And then you can just, yeah, see. Uh, okay, so now, yeah, now we have um, kind of the, like, above sub strip level descriptions completed. We have the participants uh, DSV and the data set description. And now we can move on to the uh, next part, which is to uh, so this is way easier so, than what we just did. So we just go to sub-01. Um, we can create our subfolders now. So one is going to be called the NAT, uh, ANAT, and the other one is going to be called FUNC, F-U-N-C. If you had DWI data, there'd be a folder called DWI here. If you had field data, it'd be called um, FMAP. But for our example, it'd be easy. And then, um, our next, so just our people, wait, So are we good to go? Just pull in the room. Raise your hands. Please raise your hand before you get more behind. Um, so yeah, so once we have our subfolders, uh, now we're going to um, rename our files. So this is where uh, the kind of uh, bit specification comes in. And when you first start your, like, the way to find the correct naming scheme for a file is to go through the Google Docs. But uh, we'll walk you through an example today. So uh, we'll start with the first, um, actually we'll start with the most simple T1 weighted here. So we can rename that to uh, sub-01, just like the folder name. Underscore T1 weight, uh, yeah, large capital. T capital? Yeah, yeah T1 weighted dot NII dot Gz. Or, sorry, T1W. Dot and I, yeah. Dot and I. Oh, uh, Oh, and I. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the uh, your main um, anatomical uh, image being named like that, and then your resting state image is going to be named. To reference, you can open up the, uh, the other this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can use a T2. Yeah, T2. 
and then the T2 image, um, we're going to rename uh, like the same pattern, sub dash zero one underscore in plane T2. T1weighted.ni.gz. So uh, these we can move into the NAT folder now because they're anatomical images. And the functional one, it's a little bit trickier. It's going to be named uh, sub, sub dash zero one. Yeah, underscore task. So this is going to be a format that's uh, applicable for all fMRI. Like the, you have the subject and you have the task. Then dash, in our case, um, it, it's just a resting state. But if you had movie, for example, it would be task dash movie uh, underscore uh, whatever. Uh, run. syntax of a, of a bits file name is you have the type at the end and then you have the subjects and, and optionally session identifier at the beginning and everything else in the middle are just a, a bunch of tags and so tags are just sort of like key value pairs right so you have underscore separating all your different tags and then you use your hyphen between your key and your value right so it's task dash rest run dash zero one but then underscores to, so that's what the difference between like the hyphens and the underscores. Yeah, exactly. So you can think of each one of these as one. Yeah. Um, kind of like. I guess even I guess the sub dash zero one. So it's the subject label is zero one. That's the value. And sub is the key. There is a maximum uh, number of levels within this uh, this area. Yeah. And you have sub, sub, sub with one and the type of image. But in the middle, you have different. In the middle, and, and it also. Have any, any number of them. Uh, there's, there's the predefined uh, set of keys that you have. And so that's defined in the standard. And there's also, um, there's, a, there's a ordering too. Uh, so they have to appear in the right order. For instance, like task always has to be before the run. Um, basically, sort of they try to make it a hierarchy so that things that you need that are more general up here first. Uh, but yeah, there's a limited number of those tags. But the, the general idea is that if you have to describe something, then you create a, uh, a new key for that. So they, they use that same type of framework for derived data or for other extensions or different keys. Just drag it. Actually, yeah. uh, actually, before we drag it in, uh, I just want to go to the uh, bits validator now. Um, just to show that uh, you can, so uh, this link, um, incf.github.io slash bizvalidator, it'll be on the Slack channel. So we're almost at our tutorial now, but if we were to upload this current data set, uh, yeah, you can just click on the whole folder. So you'll see there's like an error in one file. Um, actually, we'll just wait for people to get to this website first. And upload. Uh, once again, to clarify, it's not actually uploading to some kind of cloud database. All the data is still only staying in your uh, computer. So 
it's normal that you should be getting errors right now because we're not uh, done the um, tutorial yet. But what I want to show you is that at this point still, uh, you can see that how many files there are. S because of the information that we already gave it in the um, TSV file and JSON files that we've created, uh, the bin validator already knows that we have um, one subject that has uh, been scanned for one session, and we know that currently these imaging um, uh, types are available in plain T2 and T1 weighted. So you can imagine, like, if you're uh, trying to plug your data into a pipeline, this is effectively what the pipeline is able to detect too, just like the validator. Now that you've organized your data in this way, you don't have to say, oh, what's in this data. It automatically goes and finds exactly what's in uh, your data set. It'll know it better than you do, actually. Um, so you can just click on the error, for example. Um, and you can click on that. Yeah. So it'll say, uh, currently, um, this file is not part of the bid specification. That's because it's uh, not in the right folder right now, right? We haven't put it inside the, um, it's just hanging out in no man's land here. So, uh, we can put that in. Uh, you have to re-upload it, but I want to go back to the slides to see what the first steps are. Uh, yeah, we need to create the task based on code. So I'll we'll wait for that. Uh, sorry, how, this builds? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can see the, uh, the, the, the oh yeah. For the JSON file. Oh, for the JSON Basically, it'll throw anything that's not a subfolder in this little directory as yeah. an error okay. immediately. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So have people been able to plug whatever we have so far into Vince Validator? Like this is a really important step because um, like if you get nothing else from the tutorial, it's if you start converting your own data set to bits, there may not necessarily be someone who can kind of give you all the guidelines and like the right answers or templates. This is this this is your tutor basically. Like it'll tell you, okay, what's your next step to get it into bids? What's your next step to get it into bids? Um, so in a way, like producing this error is actually the most important part of this tutorial so that you can look at it and see. Um, how to approach a non-bids data set. This is what your file should look like. And are those modality um, suffixes? Suffix are those standardized? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so in so that Google Docs, yeah. yeah. So you can't, for example, call this P2 in plane. It has to be in plane T2. Yeah. Okay. Like case specific. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I expected that step. So it's completely okay if um, we lost some people at the the create the JSON file step. Um, it's it's a little bit tricky to actually get the thing to be a JSON file, not just a file called .json. So, so. In fact, so um, just to get the validator to yeah. get in here is like there hasn't been defined like a repetition time and yeah. Uh, there hasn't been a defined uh, the task name. We're gonna. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna create a JSON file in the font folder. Yeah. I think it's I think there's an underscore in there somewhere. Yeah, underscore. Yeah, data set underscore description. Yeah. So as you get specific and you're like So uh, I think we can move on now. Um, so yeah, so yeah, we fixed it in two. So yeah, so your uh, subject level folder should look like this with um, two files in an app and one file uh, in Funk. And now we need to can you go back to this. Yeah. So now we need to create a task JSON file. So this is exactly like the JSON file. Like you can even copy the file uh, from the what the first one that you created, if uh, creating the JSON file itself was part of the problem, um, but effectively uh, you're going to go into um, 
Uh, actually, let's just do it in a way that we copy the one from the, yeah. 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 So we're going to copy this one into the subfolder func. And then we're going to rename it according to uh, the drive. <laughs> This is what you're going to want to name this new JSON file in the func folder. Sub01 task run01 bold.json. So what you'll notice is that it's basically uh, the same file or same name as the file that it's accompanying to describe, except just a different type of file. So one is the actual scan image, and one is a description of that image. to edit it, you can go to the, I think we have a tiny URL for it in the, in the tutorial, in the slides, or yeah, if you go up. Yeah, so if you go to uh, this link again, um, we can post it in the Brain Hat Slack, uh, you'll have uh, like the actual contents of what the JSON needs to be. So yeah, like this. Um, and because this is a uh, fMRI task, you need to accompany it with a task name and repetition time. And so, uh, have we gotten to creating the JSON file so far? Um, so if we open up this file now, So you're going to want to post this template into here. And we know that, so this is very important, this step. It has to match, like everything has to be consistent in bids. Uh, so earlier we said the task is rest. So in this block here, between these two uh, parentheses, or between the two quotes, we're going to type rest. And just because it's rest, we're going to type zero for uh, repetition time. Yeah. So have we gotten to this part yet? Uh, creating, so copying this from the link that we posted on Jason, uh, from Brain Hack, uh, the tutorial, and then um, copying it into a new JSON file in the func folder. And it'll have the same name as the uh, image that it's accompanied. Raise your hand if there's any issues so far. I would highly suggest just copying this from the link that we provided instead of trying to type this out because, like, there's a lot of like even just one colon or comma missing can make the whole file wrong. Pardon? Oh, uh, it's on the, are, were you able to join the Slack channel? Okay. So if you click on the Slack channel. Yeah. If anyone's 
having trouble with JSON files. Um, there's also a, a JSON validator online. If you go to jsonlint.com, you can just type in your JSON code there, um, and it'll validate it. Go up to the website. Ali, what's the website there? What's uh, it? Jasonlint, L-I-N-T. Oh, the comma should be gone. Yeah. 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 Uh, Try taking it out and put it online. That's fine. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah. It's, I'm really glad we did. <laughs> yeah. So everybody needs to delete this comma at the end of the. Th that's how picky JSON files are. So. Yeah, yeah, we could, yeah, we need to remove the, uh, so make sure that there's only a comma between the first uh, column here, or for the first row and the second row, and there's uh, nothing here. So finally, yeah, so it should look like this, your uh, JSON folder, or JSON file. Saved. I mean, well, we can come back. Like, if you're still working on stuff, we, yeah, uh, we can go back to it. But just for the people that are uh, up to speed, if we upload our um, folder now, uh, you'll see there's only one warning, and this should be uh, slice timing. But sometimes, like, you don't always have all the information. But if you have yellow warning that look like this, that still means your data is fully in bits format. As long as there's no red, uh, that's okay. Um, you'll no notice that once you start working with larger and larger data sets, you scan 60 subjects, one of them might have a slightly different uh, acquisition something. Um, this generally, yeah, this, that's all it is, it's just a warning. Um, and yeah, so once again, I'd like to point out that uh, it's able to fully detect what tasks you gave it, how many subjects there are, and all the different modalities, including functional and anatomical, that you have. Uh, so yeah, while we wait for people to get up to speed. If you want a reference, um, in the slideshow that we posted, uh, if you can scroll all the way to the end. Uh, this is like the bits data set, uh, the same data set that we started with, uh, basically in bits format. So this is kind of the answer key. And uh, if there's any specific errors, then you can go through here as a reference to see what's wrong. But I would strongly encourage you to uh, first, upload your incorrect data set to the bids validator and work through the errors as you try to uh, make it work, because that's the, basically what you're going to have to do um, to convert your own data set. Yeah. So can I get a raise of hands if you guys have been able to upload your like new bids data set to the validator now and have been able to get only the one yellow warning? 
has anyone been able to successfully? Yeah, great, awesome. Um, and for those people who haven't, please raise your hand and ask and say why you haven't been able to get to that, that level, yeah, to that stage. Yeah. Yeah. What errors is it throwing? And if you're planning to attend the um, Brain Hacks, we'll, we'll be around this weekend, so you can always come ask any of us for help. Uh, can I get a show of hands if you're still uh, working on it, uh, trying to get it validated correctly, but um, running into errors? Okay. So for the rest of the uh, uh, thing, we'll just be going around helping people, but I think just uh, your talk is supposed to start soon, right? I'm not sure what we want yeah, to do. Yeah, well, we're, we're being flexible with our time, so uh -huh. um, we can make sure everyone's it's validated, mm -hmm. um, and then um, and we need 
have a quick. Can you like do a debrief and like? Yeah. Yes. Walk yeah. Through, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's just do it. Uh, and then just tell us like. Yeah. What let's just go. Each part of the naming is. Yeah. And, like, if you get to go over the principles of it's like what. Uh, why certain things are there. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So let's just. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so just to wrap up, I guess we'll just uh, quickly go through like what we did. So we first started with uh, nothing more than three files, uh, just three nifty files. Um, and to summarize, we first created a participants.tsv file, uh, if you just want to click on it. Um, and this is basically your subject list. I'm sure you guys have some version of this already. This is just a more standardized version of it. So we, we want uh, three uh, criteria here, participant ID, age, and sex. And each one of these things is tab separated by tab. So it's readable by Excel. Um, and Patrick, do you need to have those headings? Uh, I think the minimum requirement is just participant ID. Um, and then you can have whatever other IDs you want. You don't need it, mm -hmm. so you can put whatever you want in there. Basically. Yeah, but uh, the more headings you have, you'll be able to sub-categorize uh, according to them later. So it'll help you kind of run partial parts of your data set later on. And then after that, uh, we created the data set description file. Um, with which we left mostly blank, but effectively this is uh, just going to describe your data set, uh, your name, like very high level, who's involved, uh, what references you want to acknowledge, sources of funding. So this is basically, if you open a BITS data set and you're not really sure what you're looking at, this might be the first place you want to start looking. Be At least, who can you contact? There might be a useful email in here that you can find, um, et cetera. And then getting into the actual data itself, each subject will have a folder, so above there we'll have sub-01, sub sub-02, sub it'll be a list of folders like that. Below that we created two subfolders, and that and func. There's a couple more that you can create if you have data for them, DWI and uh, fmap for field maps. Under anat, um, we named our uh, files in such a way that this, this is really um, standard, so uh, it has to be sub dash um, zero 01 or whatever matches your folder name. Um, it doesn't have to be a number, but it has to be consistent throughout your data set. And uh, underscores um, kind of differentiate your sections, so between which subject it is and then what type of image this is. So early on uh, in the bids validator, we saw that um, it was able to detect, okay, you have a T1 weighted image, you have an in-plane T2 image. This is where it's reading that from, from the very ending of the file names. Uh, so that's, so in that is pretty self-explanatory that way. And then if we go to func, um, for the functional, every um, nifty file needs to have a corresponding JSON file. So to describe uh, what's in that nifty. And this will include things like what task um, does this uh, file have inside it and other parameters. So as your studies get more complex, there's extensive, extensive documentation. This can be like 15, 20, like however many um, fields you want to make it. Uh, but at the bare minimum, you want to have these enough to pass kind of the bids validator and then any additional bonus ones that you think is important to your data set, uh, you're going to want to include just exactly in this format here. So um, like two uh, quotes and then the tag name inside and uh, rest. Uh, and finally, just um, just to get more information, I think we can go back to the Google Docs. Actually, uh, I think we just go to bids. No, you just meant the, the document. Oh, yeah, you just went to. But yeah, anyways, um, actually, yeah. I think uh, the link that you want to go to is uh, I'm hoping I showed you this earlier today but I'm hoping this makes a lot more sense to you now so you can basically 
uh, control F through this document and say, um, let's say I want an uh, uh, that's not a good idea. Um, and there'll be basically there'll be documentation uh, for whatever questions you may ask have, or there's uh, forums and email lists that you can uh, ask for as well too. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to give an example of where you can find this information. Go to the table of contents, yeah. Yeah, example. So yeah, it'll uh, explain things like, so for example, this would be like, how do you organize um, this specific type of data? Um, okay, so you just stop right there. So one of the things uh, that's important, so all these different fields that you have in your JSON file, they're all standardized names, right? So like total readout time, that's that's a standardized name. It always has to be called that. And if you, if you choose to include that, right? Some of them are required, like if you scroll up, effective echo spacing. So that's required for a field map, for instance. So anytime you have a field map, you need to include that field. So there's a bunch of required fields that you need. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of optional Actually, another important point is there's a there's a hierarchy in um, in bids, and there's well there's inherent bids basically. So you can uh, you can basically define something at a higher level, um, and that will sort of trickle down to the lower levels. For instance, you can define something at the top level, at your data set level. For instance, you can define that you know a certain uh, scan is a is a resting state task. You can define that in a JSON file at the top level, and then that means that everything uh, below has that same property. So I mean, why, why don't we try that? Like, let's take that JSON file, yeah, and just move it. Uh, no, like take it out, like oh. cut it. And take it uh, up, yeah. So paste it here, right? Now remove the sub dash zero one from the file name. Uh, from, yeah. from the file name of the file you just moved. And try to bits validate it. So you can see why this would be helpful, right? Because then you just make one JSON file for your entire data set. Because that has the same task. Does it time. get inherited for your anatomical as well? Uh, well, let's see. Actually, let's go to view the errors. What are the errors here? Uh, it didn't propagate through. Um, I think because we have that run zero one there. Um, try taking away that run dash zero one. No, no, just from the, from the oh. file name. No. Yeah. Okay. Now try validating it. Yeah. <laughs> Easier, right? <laughs> now all all the old files that you have are gonna have, are gonna be considered as rest, right? Great question for you. Yeah. So in that case, if I have a different multiple runs for each subject, is there a way to specify that different runs, different stuff, like different times or something like that? Because um, in that case, you you, you probably want to run tag on that. Yeah. Um, so how it works is if you have a task um, at the top, it's going to apply it down, but you can also add specific for that run, my understanding. 
Yeah. Well, one thing to note, so remember what we named, named our files? Like, is there a way to get a view that shows all the levels? Can you do that? Uh, like a tree, yeah. right? I see. Or just go into the func folder, I guess. Just so even though you don't have a JSON file, you, the file is still named rest. All right? So it knows that that's, it knows to, to find the right JSON file for that, right? It's still called task rest. No, I mean the, so I mean now if you, so if you want to add a different run that, of a different task, you would just name that as a different task, and you could have a different JSON file. But in that JSON file, the repetition file is if you want to, yeah, if you want to override it, if you have, say, a, a, a run where you've done something differently, then you can put a JSON file here, it'll override oh, okay. it. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. anything below will override anything above. And it's a complete override, so you can't, like, stack response times in one task file and one set times in another task if, file. At, well, you, it'll only override what you redefine. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you can define, like, some, uh, all your variables at the top level, That's and then true. say you just had a, had a different TR. You could just yeah. redefine the TR in this one. So that's, it. Uh, that's the inheritance. Uh, what else? Yeah. <laughs> go back to the bits document. I like there's more that we can then just this table. Exactly. So that's really just meant to be like, you know, the table that you already have about your subject. Just, just with that first header, the first ID, uh, oh, is standard. Oh, like, otherwise, like, everything is left to you. Yeah. Uh, that should be, yeah, I think that would throw it It does have to be a TST. Yeah. But I mean, uh, technically, actually, the the TSV, so it, actually, go back to the bits validator, or uh, sorry, your top level. If you just just delete that participants file, you sure? Yeah. If you just delete it <coughs> and validate it now. Yeah, because yeah. technically it's redundant, right? Yeah, so it's, it's still valid, right? You don't, you don't actually have to have that. It's only it's only if you want to describe something more than just. Okay. Like mind you, <laughs> yeah. Because most most of them have it. But, uh, um, I feel like there's more to also cover. What else? Any other questions about bids? Yeah. Um, if you do, if you scan the same person twice, so let's say you have two sessions. Um, so I'd assume that. A uh, session would be a higher level than, well, it would be one level lower than the mm -hmm. subject. Yeah. Um, and then within each, you have all of your, like, the NAT and stuff. Exactly. And then when you name the file, do you have to specify the session? You do. Yeah. So now your file name becomes always sub uh, number and then sess. Okay. Yeah. So now, yeah, and you've basically layered, added one additional layer, that's ses the session layer. So, yeah, so this help, the data sets can be either. With that session layer or without, so there's two options. Yeah, and then the same thing with the session label; it can only be numbers and uh, letters. How does uh, how do bids handle incomplete data sets? So for some, we we do like multi modality MRI stuff on our participants, and some participants pull out halfway through, or like right. So can bids store data that's not complete for all subjects? Um, or like what's the best way to represent yeah. that? It, within the bits structure. Um, like if it's, if it's missing some sequences, like if some, some modalities are missing. So yeah. say like I collect a resting yeah. state, a DTI, yeah. and a spectroscopy sequence. Yeah. And they, they really need to get out of the scanner before right. a spectroscopy sequence. So 80% of my subjects might have yeah. the spectroscopy data and then 20% don't. Right. So how do I represent that within this? Well, one, you, you could just not include that data that's missing, right? And then so the validator would know, and it would actually it would tell you, it, it wouldn't be an error, but it would tell you that 
um, these subjects are missing these files. Right. Um, so it'd be aware of it. Um, if you wanted to make a note somewhere else, the, the place to do it would be in the participants file, just to, I guess, okay. to make a note that's missing. But the validator will know just from knowing what types there are. All right. And it won't be a violation. So it won't, yeah, yeah, it won't be a violation. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a warning. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the best tool to do that is uh, DCM2 NIIX. If you go on the, the VIDS website, there's a link to it. This is kind of transition to almost your next. Yeah, I'm true. Sure. Yeah. Well, the next thing I'm talking about is some of the automated tools we yeah, have. Just go to but you can just this is a .com converter where if you if you pass it, there's like a VIDS option for it. Um, so it's a .com to NIFTY converter, but it can also generate a JSON files. So it'll give you uh, NIFTYs and JSON files. So it's really, this would be the first step if you were going to uh, convert your data to uh, bits manually. You would use this to get all your DICOMs, uh, sorry, all your DICOMs into NIFTYs and your, so your JSON files could actually be pre-populated with all the, um, the you know, DICOM tags that it knows of as well. So it gives you a really complete set of uh, metadata. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Does that read in a standard like DICOM server structure? <laughs> it reads, yeah, basically just a, just a, a folder series. of DICOMs, yeah. yeah. And so we use DICOMs, DCM to NIS internally for our conversion as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I won't do um, the facing on it, so. Um, but I mean, Cool.